Steven Spielberg is a film producer known for creating some of the most popular movies ever. He started making films as a young boy and grew up to be one of the most successful filmmakers in history. His movies often include exciting adventures and important lessons about life and friendship. Now, think about his movies for a moment. Is there a scene or a story that really stuck with you? Maybe it changed the way you see the world or just made you smile. Also, what do you think makes Steven Spielberg's work so special that people will remember it for a long time? We'd also love to hear about your favorite memories related to Steven Spielberg's movies. Your stories and experiences are important to us, so please share them in the comments. And don't go anywhere because we have many surprising, funny, and even some sad facts about Steven Spielberg to share with you. Stay tuned to learn more about this legendary filmmaker. Steven Spielberg is a film director and producer known for his work in the adventure and science fiction genres. His filmography includes titles like Jaws, a thriller about a man-eating shark which set the standard for Hollywood blockbusters. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, another notable work, delves into human interaction with extraterrestrials. Raiders of the Lost Ark and its sequels featuring the character Indiana Jones are adventure films that blend history, myth, and action. E.T. The Extraterrestrial is a touching story about a boy and his alien friend. Jurassic Park, a groundbreaking film, brought dinosaurs to life with its special effects. Skindler's List, a departure from his usual genre, is a powerful drama about the Holocaust. Saving Private Ryan, a war film, portrays the brutality of combat realistically. For those new to Spielberg's work, these films offer a glimpse into his ability to craft compelling narratives that appeal to a wide audience. They showcase his skill in creating engaging stories that combine technical innovation with human emotion. Steven Spielberg, known for his generosity, gifted Richard Dreyfuss, Holly Hunter, and John Goodman a Mazda Maeda each after they finished filming. While working on the classic film Jaws, Spielberg found that out of a 12-hour workday, only a quarter was spent on actual filming. Phil Collins, in his autobiography, shares an interesting anecdote about his scene in a Spielberg film. There were two versions of his scene, and despite Collins' preference for the original, Dustin Hoffman convinced Spielberg to use the shorter one, which was shown at the premiere's after party. Steven Spielberg's directorial ventures are often subject to discussion. He received director's credit for a film co-released by MGM UA Communications and Universal Pictures, with United Artists managing part of the distribution. While credited as writer and executive producer for Poltergeist, some believe Spielberg also directed it. His commitment to Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade led him to pass on directing Rain Man, a United Artists film. John Goodman's casting as Delbert and a Spielberg executive produced film was a condition set by Spielberg, who had previously directed Goodman. Frank Marshall, the film's director, agreed, having worked with both on Always. Spielberg's creative touch is evident in his desire for dinosaurs in his films to exhibit natural behaviors unrelated to the plot, a detail he appreciated while working on E.T., the extraterrestrial. Steven Spielberg's experience on the set of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was unique. Although it wasn't his favorite in the series, it was memorable because he met Kate Capshaw, who would become his wife. The film's music also holds a special place in cinema history. John Williams composed two themes that Spielberg encouraged him to combine, leading to the creation of the Raiders' March. This piece, performed by the London Symphony Orchestra, has since become one of the most recognized movie themes. The development of Small Soldiers showcased the talents of many artists at Stan Winston Studio. The open creative environment allowed new designers like Jim Charmatz to contribute significantly. Their collective efforts resulted in a diverse range of character designs, which were then refined with input from Joe Dante Hasbro and Spielberg himself. John Rosengren, an artist with a background in sculpting military miniatures, was instrumental in creating two of the film's main commandos, Chip and Kip, bringing his expertise in miniature figures to the film's design process. Christian Bale's journey to the role of Jim in Steven Spielberg's film began with a personal recommendation from Amy Irving, who had worked with him previously. Despite Spielberg's initial reservations from Bale's earlier work, his audition proved decisive among the thousands who tried for the part. Spielberg's pursuit of perfection led to the creation of a special edition director's cut for one of his films, aiming to align the final product more closely with his original vision. In a personal touch to his work, 
Spielberg included his own dog, Elmer, in the film Jaws, where he also made a cameo as an Amity Point Life Station worker. These instances reflect Spielberg's hands-on approach and dedication to his craft. Steven Spielberg's creative partnership with cinematographer Janice Kaminsky began with a shared vision for storytelling through visual artistry. Their collaboration marked a significant point in film history. In the process of designing the UFOs for one of his films, Spielberg, alongside visual effects pioneer Douglas Trumbull, explored various concepts. They considered using familiar earthly symbols for the UFO designs to present them as non-threatening, but this idea was eventually not used. Spielberg's meticulous planning is evident in his year-long pre-production with illustrator George Jensenator together. They crafted thousands of sketches and detailed seven key sequences, culminating in an elaborate 30-minute finale that showcased their extensive groundwork and creative synergy. Steven Spielberg often recycles characters and actors in his films. Lucille Benson, who played a gas station attendant in 1941, also appeared in Close Encounters of the Third Kind as part of an elderly couple. Spielberg's storytelling choices are evident in his decision to exclude certain scenes from the Jurassic Park movie. He removed a scene with small dinosaurs attacking children and another with a T-Rex chasing characters because they were too frightening or due to budget constraints. These scenes were later adapted for the sequels. Spielberg's role as a producer began to take shape with his fourth production, following films like I Want to Hold Your Hand, Continental Divide, and Used Cars. His approach to filmmaking shows a balance between creative vision and practical considerations. Steven Spielberg doubted the success of a film with a $22 million budget, yet it defied his expectations by earning over $320 million globally. In an unplanned change during production, Spielberg chose to depict Jillian's search for her son by including a scene with Devil's Tower on TV in a motel, diverging from the original script where she stayed isolated at home. On the last day of filming Jaws, Spielberg outsmarted the crew's plan to throw him into the ocean by dressing in expensive clothes and making a swift exit, ensuring he was the first to leave by boat and car heading straight for a flight from Boston to Los Angeles. Steven Spielberg, while discussing AI, Artificial Intelligence shared that he often rewrites scripts for the films he directs, which is why he doesn't feel the 19-year gap since writing Poltergeist. In a personal touch to Skynler's list, the cufflinks worn by Skynler in the film's opening were a gift from Spielberg's cousin, featuring the Seaborn Cruise Line logo. On the set of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, young actor Carrie Guffey delivered his scene so effectively that he earned the nickname One Take Carrie, and Spielberg celebrated his efficiency with a custom t-shirt. Steven Spielberg's decision to direct was influenced by a script revision from Steven Zalian, known for Skyler's List. In 2002, Spielberg invested in enhancing E.T. for its 20th anniversary, adding scenes and updating effects, but later committed to preserving the film's original form. His career, marked by both setbacks and triumphs, saw him collaborate with Gandhi's cast across various projects. Spielberg's accolades include winning Best Picture and Best Director for Skyler's List, a film that featured Ben Kingsley and working with Richard Attenborough, who appeared in Spielberg's Jurassic Park the same year he released Shadowlands. The connections continued in the Lost World Jurassic Park, which included Attenborough, Joseph Mazzello, and Arliss Howard. Steven Spielberg, known for his creative cameos, appears as a popcorn-eating man in the Lost World Jurassic Park. This movie connects to his admiration for Stanley Kubrick, as Spielberg included nods to The Shining in the first Jurassic Park film. He also cast Arliss Howard, who was in Kubrick's full metal jacket, linking to Vincent D'Onofrio's later role in Jurassic World. In another instance, Spielberg is seen as a party guest in Something Evil, engaging in conversation with Carl Gottlieb. The casting of Jeff Goldblum as Dr. Ian Malcolm in the Jurassic Park series came after Spielberg decided against a draft that excluded the character. Goldblum, having read the novel, pushed for Malcolm's inclusion, which ultimately became a defining role in the series. Steven Spielberg, after years of creating influential films, earned the Oscar for Best Director, a recognition that had previously escaped him. In the making of Jurassic Park, the Dilophosaurus scene was particularly challenging. Spielberg decided against showing the dinosaur walking due to technical difficulties with animating its movement convincingly. Instead, he chose to have it suddenly appear, adding to the scene's tension. Despite using every available fire hydrant, 
Spielberg felt the scene lacked the intended amount of water, aiming for a more intense downpour. Actor Wayne Knight, who was part of this demanding scene, found the experience physically taxing yet satisfying on screen. For the film Gremlins, Spielberg and his team, including Joe Dante, Michael Fennell, and Charles Sass, contemplated adding a new character SWAT team member to introduce fresh dynamics in the story. They envisioned a series of comedic encounters between this character and the Gremlins reminiscent of classic Roadrunner Coyote cartoons. Actor Charles Napier was considered to portray this role, which was expected to add a new layer of excitement to the film's climax. Steven Spielberg's vision for bringing dinosaurs to life extended beyond the screen. He wanted to capture the awe of his own children. When they saw the towering T-Rex model, their desire to stay was exactly what Spielberg aimed for, a sentiment shared by writer Michael Crichton. Spielberg's knack for creating memorable scenes is evident in a nod to his past work, an elderly couple in a red car, reminiscent of a similar scene from Back to the Future, a film he helped bring to fruition. His dedication to his craft saw him pausing the editing of Jurassic Park to begin filming in Poland, showcasing his ability to juggle multiple groundbreaking projects simultaneously. Steven Spielberg once said he felt like a reporter on set, observing the unfolding scenes as if they were real events rather than crafted fiction. In Jaws, he chose authenticity over props by using a crew member's arm to represent a character's remains, ensuring the scene's realism. Spielberg's eye for talent led him to create a role specifically for Vin Diesel in Saving Private Ryan, inspired by Diesel's own work on the film Strays, showcasing Spielberg's commitment to nurturing new talent in the industry. Steven Spielberg, a notable figure in the film industry, achieved the number one spot on Premiere's Hollywood Power List in 23, marking the third occasion he received this honor, with previous top rankings in 1994 and 1995. In a memorable cameo, he appeared as a popcorn-eating spectator in the Lost World Jurassic Park. During the production of a scene involving a young Tyrannosaurus Rex, actors were instructed to act against invisible flies, which were later added digitally. Spielberg praised Pete Postlethwaite's performance in the film, lauding him as the best actor. Additionally, Spielberg took on the role of directing at least one scene in the movie, showcasing his hands-on approach to filmmaking. In the film Jaws, Steven Spielberg took on the minor role of an Amity Point Life Station worker. The production faced challenges from the start, as the team had to begin shooting without a complete script due to unexpected bad weather at Martha's Vineyard. This required Spielberg and writer Carl Gottlieb to craft the screenplay in the evenings after daily filming. Reflecting on his work in The Color Purple, Spielberg later expressed regret over not fully exploring the relationship between Sully and Shug, fearing audience reaction to their sexuality. Additionally, Claire Danes was approached for a role in one of his projects, but declined because on-set tutoring could not be provided, leaving the specific part she was considered for a mystery. In the world of film, Steven Spielberg's decisions often reflect his personal beliefs and professional standards. For instance, despite his support for President Jimmy Carter, Spielberg faced a moment of conflict during the production of a film when a line disparaging Carter was included. He expressed his disapproval, but ultimately the line remained, illustrating the tension between personal convictions and artistic expression. In another instance, Spielberg's cameo as a popcorn-eating spectator in the Lost World Jurassic Park added a touch of humor to the intense action. His intention to cast Indian actor Amar. Gopa humor in the film was thwarted by travel document issues, showing how unforeseen circumstances can affect casting decisions. Additionally, the role of Shug Avery in The Color Purple was given to Margaret Avery when Tina Turner declined the offer, demonstrating the fluid nature of casting in Hollywood. In crafting the adventure of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Steven Spielberg embraced a return to his earlier, more unrestrained filmmaking approach. His cameo as a tourist at the airport nods to his love for playful storytelling. This film's exploration of dark cults preludes his work in Young Sherlock Holmes, where similar themes are explored with an Egyptian twist. Spielberg's storytelling choices, such as the use of secret observation points and themes of grave robbing, create a thread between the two films, also linking them through the mention of Delhi. Quentin Tarantino, known for his own distinctive style, raises Temple of Doom as his top pick in the series, highlighting Spielberg's daring move that led to the creation of the PG-13 rating, marking a significant moment in film history. 
Steven Spielberg's father, Clovis, played a significant role in his life. In the film industry, Spielberg worked with Kyle MacLachlan, who had previously acted in Spielberg's former mother-in-law Priscilla Pointer's movie Blue Velvet and with Laura Dern in Jurassic Park. Spielberg himself appeared in the Lost World Jurassic Park as a popcorn-eating man. For the same film, the team faced challenges while filming the Stegosaurus scenes. They decided to use the juvenile animatronic Stegosaurus on location in California due to safety concerns with the adult animatronic spiked tail. The adult Stegosaurus was mostly created using computer-generated imagery, except for close-up shots, which were filmed at Universal Studios to ensure a safe environment for the stunts. In the Lost World Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg took a cameo as a man-eating popcorn, but his main contribution was behind the camera, enhancing the visual spectacle. The film showcased improved visual effects, with more dinosaur species and a higher number of effect shots than its predecessor. Spielberg praised the digital artists for their advancements in detail, lighting, and movement, making the creature's actions more realistic. For the color purple, Spielberg stepped away from his usual collaboration with composer John Williams, instead working with Quincy Jones for the film score. This marked a notable change in his directorial approach, diversifying the auditory experience of his storytelling. Spielberg's creative decision to depict the death of a character in the opening scene of a film underscored the peril of tornadoes. This choice set the stage for the protagonist's intense focus on these natural disasters, driving the narrative forward with a personal and emotional anchor. In casting for his film, Steven Spielberg faced a unique challenge. He considered Paul Newman and Robert Redford for the roles of Pete Sandich and Ted Baker, but both actors were interested in playing Pete, leading to an unresolved situation. Meanwhile, Oliver Robbins took on roles in two 1982 films about a family haunted by ghosts. Spielberg's poltergeist had no casualties, except maybe a bird, while Aaron Spelling's Don't Go to Sleep had four. Spielberg's quest for authenticity and dinosaur sounds for another film led him to Gary Rydstrom, who combined animal sounds to create the dinosaur's roars. The terrifying blend included swan calls, hawk cries, rattlesnake hisses, and howler monkey screams. The sound of the T-Rex was even based on Rydstrom's own dog, adding a personal touch to the fearsome creature. In the world of film, connections between characters and their experiences can be subtle yet significant. In two different movies directed by Steven Spielberg, Richard Dreyfuss' characters share a unique link through the National Geographic. In one scene, Roy from Close Encounters of the Third Kind tries to explain his extraordinary sighting in the sky, comparing it to the Aurora Borealis, a phenomenon he read about in the magazine. This reference echoes an earlier Spielberg film, Jaws, where Dreyfus' character is taunted with the prospect of appearing in the same publication. Spielberg's vision for his films often extends beyond the main feature. He intended to pair one of his movies with the animated short roller coaster Rabbit featuring Roger Rabbit. However, a decision by Michael Eisier led to the short debuting with Dick Tracy instead. This choice did not sit well with Spielberg, and it took years before another Roger Rabbit short was made. Behind the scenes, Spielberg's creativity is matched by his problem-solving skills. During the filming of Raiders of the Lost Ark, when faced with a stunt double's reluctance to perform amid snakes, he turned to snake handler Stephen Edge. Spielberg's solution was unconventional, but effective he asked Edge to shave his legs and wear a dress to double for Marion's legs in the Well of Souls scene. Edge also shared that Harrison Ford, unlike his character Indiana Jones, was not afraid of snakes, even when confronted with a cobra during a tense moment in the film. The handlers used a toy rabbit to provoke the snake's defensive hooding behavior, ensuring the scene's dramatic effect. Steven Spielberg, after a helicopter crash on the set, left immediately following the incident. This event led to John Landis being charged with a fatality during filming, a first for a director. The children's families received settlements amounting to millions. Spielberg's projects often saw budget increases due to his evolving vision, as seen when the budget for a film shot starting May 16, 1976 escalated to $11 million. In a tribute to his father's service in World War II, Spielberg contributed to the construction of a theater at the National D-Day Memorial, reflecting his father's role as a radio operator and pilot in the Army Air Corps. Steven Spielberg's presence on the set of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was more than just directorial oversight. In a unique turn, he stepped in to assist DR, Nanayakara, the actor playing the village shaman who did not understand English. 
Spielberg provided off-camera cues for Nan Eckhart to deliver his lines phonetically, resulting in the noticeable pauses in the shaman's speech. Contrary to widespread speculation, Spielberg's involvement in the editing of Indiana Jones was minimal. Jan DeBont clarified in an interview that Spielberg conducted only one additional shoot due to DeBont's commitments during post-production. The iconic mothership in Close Encounters of the Third Kind underwent a significant transformation from Spielberg's initial vision. Inspired by an oil refinery's complex structure and the sprawling city lights of Los Angeles, the final design became a luminous, less intimidating presence in the night sky, a stark contrast to the original concept of a dark, ominous craft. Spielberg's creative process was influenced by his experiences and the environments he encountered during filming. In the world of cinematic storytelling, Steven Spielberg often draws from his personal connections and friendships to enhance his films. He saw a reflection of himself in John Hammond from Jurassic Park, a character who shares Spielberg's own sense of wonder and ambition. This connection led him to cast a director as Hammond, who introduces the park's wonders through a film within a film, contrasting the all-black attire of Ian Malcolm with Hammond's all-white ensemble. Spielberg's relationship with Stanley Kubrick also influenced his work, particularly in the battle scenes of his movies, where he applied the same dramatic technique seen in Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. His collaboration with editor Verna Fields on Jaws, which followed their previous work together, resulted in an Academy Award for Fields, showcasing the successful outcomes of consistent teamwork in filmmaking. Steven Spielberg's involvement in film projects often led to significant changes, as was the case with the script originally penned by Paul Schrader. After Spielberg altered much of the content, Schrader chose to withdraw his name from the credits, prompting Spielberg to take on the writing credit himself. In another instance, the title of Back to the Future faced opposition from Sid Sheinberg of Universal Pictures, who suggested Spaceman from Pluto instead. Spielberg cleverly averted this by treating Sheinberg's memo as a humorous suggestion, leading Sheinberg to relent and keep the original title. Spielberg's knack for recognizing talent is evident in his casting choices, such as selecting Lorraine Gary for her authentic performance in the Marcus Nelson murders, which secured her a role in Jaws. Steven Spielberg, recognized as one of the leading filmmakers in the industry, earned the title of the 11th greatest director from Entertainment Weekly. While directing the profound film Skyler's List in Poland, Spielberg managed a demanding dual role. He oversaw post-production for Jurassic Park via satellite, dedicating his intuition to Skyler's List and his technical skill to Jurassic Park. This intense period involved renting satellite channels for continuous communication with his team in Hollywood, reviewing daily visual and audio feeds and working on them during his off hours. During this time, Spielberg experienced a personal milestone. His first child was born. This event coincided with the filming of a birth scene in Skyler's List, which Spielberg had to delegate to his assistant director. In a touching blend of his personal and professional life, he later incorporated the sounds of his newborn's cries into the film. This period in Spielberg's career showcases his dedication to his craft, balancing the demands of his professional projects with significant personal events. Steven Spielberg often includes unique elements in his films that become his trademarks. In one instance, a character named Data wears a belt inscribed with 07, showing Spielberg's nod to the James Bond series. Before an action sequence, Data even listens to the James Bond theme, adding to the film's adventurous spirit. For practical and budgetary reasons, Spielberg once used a six-foot scale model of a used car lot to plan his shots. This approach allowed him to visualize the scene and direct it effectively without incurring high costs. In the Lost World Jurassic Park, Spielberg made a cameo as a man eating popcorn. He also made creative decisions about the characters, such as excluding Lewis Dodgson from the film, despite the character's larger role in the original book. This choice streamlined the story for the movie adaptation. Steven Spielberg's work often nods to other filmmakers and their influence on his own storytelling. For example, the opening scene of a play in one of his movies mirrors a scene from The 400 Blows, directed by Francois Truffaut, who also acted in Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. In Jaws, Spielberg himself appears as a worker at Amity Point Life Station. Contrary to popular belief, 
The movie Jaws does not avoid the color red except for blood. In fact, red is visible throughout the film in various elements. Spielberg's attention to detail is also evident in the 3D version of one of his action-packed films, where he enhanced a jeep chase scene by adding leaves, increasing its intensity. Steven Spielberg's hands-on approach during the Omaha Beach battle scenes shows his dedication to realism and authenticity. He operated the camera himself for many shots, capturing the chaos and intensity of combat. This direct involvement is a testament to his commitment to storytelling. The challenge of acting without physical references was significant for the cast. They had to rely on Spielberg's guidance to visualize and react to unseen elements. Melinda Dillon described the process as an intense acting exercise, while Francois Truffaut struggled with the abstract nature of the task. Richard Dreyfuss, upon seeing the completed film, felt that his reactions would have been different had he been able to see the actual effects during filming. For the character of Casper, Spielberg's vision led to a significant change from the early computer-generated imagery. The initial models were true to the comic book appearance, but lacked emotional expression. Spielberg intervened to give Casper more expressive eyes, similar to the warmth and friendliness seen in E.T., enhancing the character's connection with the audience. Steven Spielberg has a record of directing films that topped the North American box office on their opening weekend. His movies Jaws, Indiana Jones, and The Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones, and The Last Crusade, Jurassic Park, and The Lost World, Jurassic Park all achieved this feat. Even the sequels Jaws 2 and Jurassic World, which he did not direct, followed suit. Despite his success, Spielberg faced challenges, such as not being able to secure the rights to the song Always by Irving Berlin for one of his films. His involvement in Jaws extended beyond directing. He played a small role and influenced an improvised line by Robert Shaw, which was inspired by an inscription from an old Irish gravestone. This showcases Spielberg's hands-on approach and the unexpected sources of inspiration that can influence filmmaking. In The Lost World Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg made a cameo as a man eating popcorn. In a notable scene, the character Roland Tembo, played by Pete Postlethwaite, uses a custom-made double-barreled rifle. This rifle, designed for the film by B. Searcy & Co. of Boron, California, is a powerful 600 Nitro Express, one of only two made for a cost of 100 each. Spielberg kept one of these rifles, although he rarely uses it due to the recoil. Michael Kahn, Spielberg's go-to film editor, worked on this movie. Kahn has a history of editing high-profile films, including Twister, directed by Jan Debon, and produced by Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment. A memorable visual in Spielberg's films often involves significant moments reflected in a car's rearview mirror. One such instance is when Muldoon observes the T-Rex approaching the vehicle in a tense chase scene, highlighting Spielberg's attention to detail and creating suspenseful moments. In the suspenseful chase film Duel, Steven Spielberg used the truck's collection of license plates to hint that the driver had a history of deadly encounters on the road. Spielberg's cameo in Gremlins as a man in an electric wheelchair was a subtle touch, overshadowed by the tension on set when he visited, which actor Zach Galligan felt affected his performance in a scene with co-star Phoebe Cates. Spielberg's appearance as a popcorn-eating spectator in the Lost World Jurassic Park followed his decision to cast Vince Vaughn after being struck by Vaughn's talent during an early screening of Swingers, where Spielberg had to approve the use of the iconic Jaws theme. Steven Spielberg saw the making of Saving Private Ryan as a personal mission, a way to honor his father who served in World War II. Despite doubts about its commercial success due to its intense war scenes, the film defied expectations and became a major hit. His dedication to portraying the war realistically earned him the United States Navy's highest civilian award, the Distinguished Public Service Award. Spielberg's eye for talent led him to cast Terry Gar in a role after being struck by her expressive performance in a brief coffee advertisement. In the world of film, the choice of sound can be as telling as the visuals. For the climactic scene in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where the grand ship descends upon Devil's Tower, it was Jim Self's tuba that provided the voice for the mothership. This decision by Steven Spielberg and composer John Williams was intentional. The tuba's challenging playability lent a sense of humanity to the alien presence. Meanwhile, Juliette Binoche faced a tough decision when offered a disturbing role by Spielberg, which she declined. Her choice led her to pass on another Spielberg project, Jurassic Park, in favor of starring in Three Colors Blue. 
Spielberg's own moment of personal achievement, his college graduation was marked by a musical tribute fitting for a cinematic hero. As he received his degree, decades after first starting his studies, the familiar strains of the Indiana Jones theme celebrated his walk across the stage. This moment underscored the deep connection between Spielberg's life and his enduring work in film. During the filming of Raiders of the Lost Ark, Steven Spielberg used breaks to create a new story. He shared his ideas with Melissa Matheson, who was visiting the set. She wrote the script that would become E.T. The secrecy around the film was so significant that the team designing the movie poster had to rely solely on Spielberg's descriptions without seeing the alien. Spielberg also made a brief appearance as a tourist in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, adding a personal touch to his work. <laughs>